this is kind of a unique shot here. Just it's Vin Scully and I'm up at the plate and whatever, but it's from the bat, you know, it's just the field and it's Vin. I don't know. It's kind of odd, but it's, I think it's cool. The rest of the stuff is all in storage, boxes, garages, everywhere. So it's weird because I don't even feel like I played, right? It's, it's been so long ago and I, I it, I shouldn't say it's been so long ago, but you see stuff and it's, you know, there's been another lifetime than the broadcasting. I've been broadcasting. The crazy thing is uh, longer than I played, which is really bizarre when I think of it. Um, but, you know, then there, you, you see every once in a while you see video stuff or then I walk, you know, I walk to the weight room, I walk through here and, uh, you know, you see stuff and you go, yeah, actually I did play. I remember I played, you know. He grew up a Reds fan, but Eric Caro spent most of his adult life as a Dodger, including this season as one of the new voices in the Dodger broadcast booth. Red interior, Tommy would not have liked it. Lasorda, that is. Caro moved to Los Angeles when he walked on as an infielder at UCLA. Living in the South Bay since his early days as a Dodger, he has no trouble navigating his way to Chavez Ravine. You know, I've got it down pat. It used to be, it used to be before the 105, it used to be 405 South to the 110 North. And uh, Mike Piazza and I used to, we'd drive in every, every day. We were, uh, I still remember we'd listen to uh, NWA, Dr. Dre. <laughs> It's <laughs> date myself there. But that's, uh, yeah, we used to just blast the music and, and drive on in. We listened to a lot of NWA and a lot of uh, Death Row as well back then. So, and that was the thing that was going on in LA as well. So that was kind of culturally what was happening and we, we enjoyed it, it fired us up. And uh, it brought us very close together too, because as teammates, you have to talk things out, and we have to talk about what was going on with the team, good and bad. And we were also self-critical as well. We were able to evaluate ourselves and not have it be personal. So it was, it was very much a positive team-building experience. In 92, they had, we had the riots. And so I stayed with Brett Butler up in Glendale. Brett Butler was a center fielder for us uh, because we couldn't come south. And he'd give me his advice all the time. And, you know, he's kind of like the father figure. But one of the times he's talking to me, he says, Eric, he says, enjoy every day in the big leagues like it's your last because it's going to go like, and he snaps his finger, fingers. And I, I'm thinking to myself, hey, come on, dude. I, what do you mean it's gonna, the career is going to go like that? It's going to go. But I'll be darned, he was right. It, the, the, I mean, the, the 14 years just it was, it was a snap of a finger. Just. Before you know it, you're, you know, you're broadcasting games, right? <laughs> Instead of playing them. So you do. That's my advice to everybody. Appreciate what you got going at the time, because it's going to go like that. Stole that from Brett Butler. Karos's major league career began with a brief stint in September of 1991. But in 92, the goal was to leave spring training with the big club. I had a great camp. I felt like I deserved to play in the big leagues. I, I'd proven everything in the minor leagues. And what ended up happening is Kip Gross went, started the season on the disabled lift, list, a, a relief pitcher, and they decided to keep me. So I had an opportunity to break camp uh, with the team, and that was, that was pretty exciting. He was very quiet, very shy. And even the clubhouse, he kind of kept to himself, where you got a lot of guys out there, man, they're loud, and I was probably one of them. And, you know, we would kind of, you know, laugh and kid and joke. And he would just sit in the background, and he would observe, and he would watch. And it was almost as if he was gaining information. So Karras on a hit run, 
Runs down to second base and nobody there. Oh, doctor, everybody fell asleep. He went out there and he took his ground balls and he took his VP and he just waited for an opportunity. And when he finally got the opportunity, matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, I think in, in his first game in April, I think he had a home run. And a pitch on the way, there's a drive to left field, that's gone. Heading for the wall, it's out of here. And the Dodgers are on top three to nothing. Then all of a sudden there's this calmness about him and it was like he just fit in. But I still think it took him probably a month or so to, to kind of feel comfortable. Most of his early playing time came as a platoon player hitting against left-handed pitching. But in late May, Karos got the call to pinch hit in the bottom of the ninth with his team trailing the Pirates four to two. In the left field, Bonds going back and this one is gone. Dodgers have won it. Tommy Lasorda hasn't been smiling much in the series. He is now. Eric Karros, a pinch and home run in the bottom of the ninth. He was back in the lineup the next day and started every remaining game of his rookie season. Knowing that he'd play every day, Karros no longer felt pressure. He started to apply it. Just being told, look, you're going to be the guy. It's not going to be a weekend series against righties. You know, things just started to, to click for me. And I was in the lineup every day. And I was comfortable. Things went well. Things went very well. 20 bombs with 88 runs batted in earned him Rookie of the Year honors. The first of five consecutive Dodgers to win the award, including Mike Piazza, with whom Keros bonded on and off the field. The fact that Eric was a rookie and then I was a rookie next year, we were, we were a little bit of the, the young guard and we were kind of pulling together to sort of push back a little bit against the veteran presence. It was something that I'll never forget, living on the beach, starting to make some good money, walking down, watching the, you know, the Cuervo volleyball championships, grabbing a burger and getting in the car and going to play baseball at Chavez Ravine at night in the summer. I mean, who was better than us, really? I mean, there was nothing more we could ask for. It was like, as Tommy always says, blue heaven on earth. Back goes Kelly. Forget it, boys. Upstairs. Oh. Having an opportunity to hit behind him was, was crazy, just because at first I'm thinking, you know, okay, this guy is just, he's just hot, right? And it just, but as you would see over the months and the years and the, Easily one of the greatest right-handed hitters to play. I think Eric was instrumental in my success because he really led me and taught me to be focused and never take it for granted and never stop working and never stop realizing that there's always more hurdles, there's always more challenges, and to continue to challenge yourself. He really took me under his wing, and for that, I'm, I'm forever grateful. Goodbye. I mean, Piazza killed it. That would be the seventh time this year the Dodgers have had back-to-back -back home runs. 1995 was a sensational year for Karros, who led the Dodgers to the postseason. 32 home runs, 105 RBIs, a Silver Slugger Award, a model of consistency, Karos averaged more than 30 homers and 100 ribbies from 95 through 2000. And his run at first base was the longest for a Dodger since Steve Garvey. He was one of the more underrated players in the league, I think. Um, maybe because you had the Mark Races and, and other Will Clarks and other guys at, at first base. Uh, which were obviously more of uh, well-known names. But I think in his mind and in my mind, we know we don't play or do things to worry about getting cookies or compliments. We play because we do we do the right thing, and he always did the right thing as a player. So I think he rests very, uh, very peaceful at night knowing that he left it all out there. Karos left a lasting mark in the record books in June of 2000 when he passed Ron Say as the Los Angeles Dodgers all-time home run leader. Fastball hit the left field and deep. Back goes Gonzalez, gone. And there it is. Eric Harris becomes the greatest.
biggest home run hitter in Los Angeles history. Ron Say is here and saw him do it. Looking back on some of the things that uh, you experienced throughout your career, you have a greater appreciation once you're done playing. But it's something that I'm very proud of. There have been a lot of great names that have uh, worn the Dodger uniform. And to think that uh, I, I get mentioned along some of those names, it's flattering. Backstage Dodgers is brought to you by Cadillac. All right, here we go. Min Scully press box, the new home. Since he retired from baseball in 2004, Eric Karros has been in broadcasting. Though this is his first year on the Dodgers broadcast team, it's interesting to note that his very first baseball broadcast occurred right here in Dodger Stadium. When I was uh, in 04, when I was done playing, I was sitting at home and the head of Fox, Ed Gorin, had given me a call and said, hey, look, we need somebody to do the Dodger Giants game last weekend of the season. And so I'm thinking, you serious? I, okay, I, I, I've never done a game before in my life. You, you, you have to talk about the resiliency of the Dodger ball club, the fact that the offense keeps battling back. I'm getting an opportunity to do the Dodgers Giants Saturday, second to last game of the season. Ironically, that's the game that Steve Finley hits the walk-off grand slam. The Dodgers end up winning the division. Questions have been answered right now. Pre-game routine is coming, filling out the lineup cards, reading up. Usually go down to the field, talk to the guys, um, see if anything's going on specifically for, for the night's game. Um, you know, that's really just about it, you know, talk to uh, that guy up there, Joe, he just walked in. He looks excited, fired up. Yeah, when we knew that there might be an opening for some people to get some games, he was the first guy that came to mind for me. So I, I called our bosses and said, let's talk to Eric and uh, find a way to make this work. And it's been as great as I figured it would. He's such a pro, he's got a big time sound, he, he studies and he obviously knows the team well. And he's somebody that has built in credibility because of what he did as a player here. <laughs> Missed a belt loop. No, you didn't. You saw a little utter panic there, though, huh? I forgot belts before. Karos makes a lap on the field checking on players, including the one he met in 2017, before the then minor leaguer earned the same Rookie of the Year award Karos had. One more. Yeah, I was in spring training one year, and, uh, you know, we were just chanted up in the cage, and um, just talking baseball and, and talking hitting. How are you hanging? All good? All good. Starting to get the uh, feel back again. Yeah. Still early. That's crazy about hitting, right? It, I mean, I think it was just super uh, comfortable and comforting feeling, you know? Um, just, just, you know, he's just one of the good guys. You know, he's just one of the better guys out there who you can have a conversation with and um, just a real genuine person. Oh, God dang, dude. Belly, let me see. Wow, dude. Man, I was feeling homeless for a sec. That's, uh, that's fresh, dude. That's Our almost boy. tennis ball-esque right Our there, boy, dude. Junior. Oh, he took care of it here at the clubhouse? Yeah. 100 bucks down the drain. <laughs> Good luck. I love him as a broadcaster. It kind of gives an offensive point of view, in, in a way, an offensive brain. and guy that obviously had su success in, in the game and um, you know I, he, he's uh, it's just nice to have guys that have played the game and um, just kind of understand everything and he he's uh, just he's been doing a great job. Pirates at 20 and 27 but they've won three of the four matchups between these teams this year. 
On an 0-2, that's a fastball. Did he go? He did. One away on a strikeout. So I like what Urias did in this situation. He started him off with that curveball low, get his sights down there, and then went fastball for a strikeup, and this one's out of the zone. Reynolds just could not hold off. The up-down part of pitching is, is so effective against hitters. Better than the east-west. It's always cool when there's somebody who has the track record that Eric has that doesn't care to tell you about it, right? He's never going to bring up that he hit more home runs than anybody in L.A. Dodger history. He's never going to talk about the career that he had. Uh, it's, I think that's always great. And not that you have to be like that, but when that's quality somebody possesses, it's definitely endearing. I think that only gets you so far, though. You've got to do the work. You've got to be okay on the air, and, and he's more than okay, and he does the work. So you put those things together, and it's comforting to have a guy like that next to you and, and know that you're, you're kind of buoyed by somebody who people are going to respect right away, given the, given the history and given the work that they do. Got the Dodgers back into the ball game, feeling good about themselves, you know, not Oof. having to chase. Oh, boy. Hey, hey, hey. You know, that's one of the greatest things. When you're talking about hitting, the most difficult thing to do for 99% of the people, standing in there and overcoming the fear. Jeez, I, yeah. That's it right there, overcoming the fear. What I am getting used to is national games versus uh, local games and, and being the, the, the team broadcaster. There is a bit of a difference, uh, and I'm still getting my feet wet. But I, uh, I, I absolutely thoroughly enjoy being back with the organization and, and having an opportunity to, to be with these guys. I mean, it's, it's really come full circle. After being swept by the Pirates, it is time to turn the page because the National League's top team and hottest team has arrived here at the Ravine. It's the Dodgers and New York Mets kicking off a four-game series. What cliche should we use for the series? Measuring stick, litmus test? I just want to play a clean baseball game. Um, it's a good ball club. We're in the midst of losing three straight baseball games, so the narrative is we're just trying to get back on track and win a ball game. Justin Turner. He spent four seasons with the Mets before coming to the Dodgers. Of course, he's in the lineup tonight at his JT Jersey giveaway day, complete with the pine tar stain. Stop us if you've heard this one before. No, don't. You heard it. A lot. But does a great story ever get old? See, Justin Turner was a Met. Then they cut him loose. The Dodgers signed him to a minor league deal. Then he made the roster. Juan Uribe got hurt, and Turner was in the lineup. More and more. And in time, Turner became a Met regret and a Dodger star. And Turner in the air to center field. That ball's hit well. Martinez on the run. This is way back, and it is gone! It is a walk-off home run for Justin Turner! Jersey night. Go oh, Titans. Are they good? Yeah, they got the pine tar stain and everything on them. There they are. They're putting them on. Look at the back. Let's see if he turns around. Got a stain on the back? It's got the, it's got the pine tar stain on it. It's great. Is that, is they, they clean that every night and it comes back every night? Yeah. How much time do you take? They just have the spray they put on it and it comes right out. Oh, they spray and wash it, they don't have to do anything? Just spray. Well, they spray it and then they throw it in. What's up, no more? You gotta use the Mad Bum arm action. Tell me if you can see this arm angle on the changeup. <laughs> One more. Woo! Snapdragon. Ever tell you about 
it was like my second year with the Mets. Me and I, day game, one o'clock game. Me and Ike are like, all right, we're gonna take an Uber at 10 o'clock. I put in, uh, I put in Miami Stadium. Uber driver took us to University of Miami. We got to the field at like 11.20. Oh, no. Yeah, it was brutal. Yeah, we were like so tired. We're like half asleep in the Uber. And we're like, we, the guy's like, all right, we're here. We look up, we're like, where are we? <laughs> all right, Slappy. One time. Mm. Oh, you beat me. Yeah, I like it. See or no? Oh, no, but good. What? No, but good. <laughs> oh. No, but good. Oh, no, but good. No, but bad. Controls are still like in the ground. Bad. See. Oh, wall ball. Love that game. Oh, double. Oh my good God almighty. See, but see. <laughs> Chance for the Dodgers. First and third for Mookie Betts. Oddest hitter. Stays that way and gives the Dodgers the lead. Three consecutive singles, and it's 1 0 in the fifth. The Dodgers scored first, and in the bottom of the sixth, the Met killer, the man of the night, does it to his old team again. To deep right center, Marte. To the track, can't get it. Two nothing. Turner drives home. Turner. Dodgers trying to snap the Mets' six-game winning streak. Craig Kimbrell's two-two pitch. He struck him out. 97 blown by Alonzo. And the Dodgers take the first game between these two National League powerhouses. 2-0 the final score. On the next Backstage Dodgers, a decorated two-sport athlete chases his major league dream. And he drives one up the middle of base hit! 